You have a ministry. Wade has a ministry. We got all these guys have a ministry here. And you know and how are how are we going to come together and allow God to use that vision that is given to us? And the one thing, how do we reach the world? We are back on Somebody Loves You, uh, Straight Talk. Uh, we're encouraged. We got uh, Pastor Raul with us today and also Wade O'Neill, myself, Sean McKeon. And we're in 2020. I never thought I would be able to say, man, the year 2020. Years ago, I'm sure for you, Raul, but back in the day, 2020 seemed so far. I have been laughing the last couple of weeks when you're talking about 2020 and think you're going to be flying There's on There's a program 2020. <laughs> yeah, there is. But, I, you know, a lot of people thought we would be like in space or like, you know, on yeah, spaceships big. and stuff. and. You know, but we're here and we're doing ministry and there's a lot of great things that are in store. And so we what we want to talk about today is what God has done, maybe here in a little bit of the past this last year, but more so focusing on our hearts and ministry in 2020. What do you see, Raul? What what is God leading you to do this year? Where is your heart? Well, first of all, in the book of Proverbs says, Without a vision the people perish. And surely we need a vision for our church, for you personally, and then for the people God has in store to you. What are we going to do with the people in the church? Mm. We can't do anything for the people in the church unless God does it in our lives first. I would like to see, you know, more people getting taught the Word of God, real important to me. And I would like to see um, outreaches, you know, reaching out to your community, uh, to other people beyond your community. You have a ministry, Wade has a ministry. We got all these guys have a ministry here. And, you know, and how, are, how are we going to come together and allow God to use that vision that is given to us? And the one thing, how do we reach the world? Wade, when we're talking about vision for the new year, Raul just mentioned a scripture from uh, the book of Proverbs where it says, without vision, the people perish. Why is it so important to have a fresh vision as you're going into a new year, a new season of your life and ministry? You don't want to, the Bible talks about in Ephesians, before we came to Christ, we were kind of aimlessly wandering about in this world, really with no purpose. And so the importance of having a biblical vision for yourself, for the work that the Lord has called you to, for your family, for your children, for your marriage, it's important because it's going to keep you walking the straight and narrow path in your own life. There's so many distractions in this world. We talk about them often, especially now in the year 2020, whether it's social media or um, the things that are going on internationally in our world. There's so many different challenges and distractions, but when you have a true vision from the Lord, you know the direction that the Lord has called you to walk in your life, and you're staying true to that. You're staying simple in the Word of God. It really enables you uh, to plow a straight line in one direction, and those who are following you can follow behind you, and you really begin to accomplish things for the Lord. And that's what it's about in our life, is bringing glory to the Lord. And we're not going to do that if we're constantly walking about in a circle. It's like the children of Israel wandering mm -hmm. in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. um, Moses knew where he wanted to go, mm -hmm. but the people were unbelieving. And so um, maybe this is a year for hopefully for those who are listening to that they'll pick up the promise of God, begin to believe it, and just walk forward in faith and see the Lord use their life. Yeah. You know, I think an important part whenever you are, you know, open for a new work is that you're doing inventory in your life. You're letting God speak to you. Mm -hmm. you're, you're letting conviction come into your lives. You are, you know, seeking out what God wants for you in the future. Um, I think it's important as, like, you love teaching the book of Nehemiah. You've taught it so many times. <laughs> and before Nehemiah did a work, you know, he prayed. Yeah. He, he sought the Lord. And then even in that, when he went into the land for the, the venture that God was leading him into, he walked the land. He prayed. He was open. And he prayed for people that would be a, a part of the work as well. It's so important because sometimes we can get at the head of the game. It's important to hear the voice of God when you're coming into a new year like this. You know, that's a, that's a problem. A lot of people don't hear the voice of God. Number mm. one, they're not in the Word. 
So how can you hear the Word of God if you're not studying God's Word? I, I think it's important in your home. When you get up in the morning, you got to start your day with Christ. You know, you get up, you pray, you read, then you get ready to go to work. Now you're going to work with something in your life, something spiritual that's going to take you on for the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. When you have a situation, a problem at work or out of work, who are you going to go to? my niece, and pray and go to the Word of God. Lord, what do you want me to do in this situation which is needed? Because it's all, you you have to be prepared in God's Spirit. One day can change the direction of your life. Yep. You know, we know many people that have faced tragedy in their life, and it comes all of a sudden. And it's so important to have a good foundation. You talk about um, the importance of being connected to the Lord in the morning. You know, what you'll find, and I, I found just like even like today, you know, the things I've been praying about and then reading the word in the morning and listening to a study, mm-hmm. boom, it connects a dot on something that was really important yeah. for my life to kind of solidify, yes, that you, you're doing the right thing. And this is why, and it gives you a biblical background. It gives you like an insurance that you're you're walking with the Lord. You're hearing His voice. You're walking as a spiritual you're, man. You're walking as a spiritual man. You know, because there's challenges in this life. There are going to be many blessings in 2020. There's also going to be challenges. And to be able to prepare for those things, you've got to stay rooted and grounded in the Word of God. We are seeing so many advances in technology in our world today. It seems like yeah, every talk year. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it seems like every year... Um, there are more advancements, a lot of cool things, uh, but also we know that those are challenges. Us as parents, me and Wade have young children. Raul, you have your children are grown up, but yeah. you have a lot of grandchildren. Yes. Um, and, you know, we've been talking about this the last couple of months. There are so many things out there on the media, pl- social media platforms um, and different things where there's human trafficking that's out there. Yeah. There's sex exploitation that, that is out there. Um through social media, and parents need to be aware of these things. We're going blind. to be talking they're about blind. a lot of these things in many yeah. shows and some of our teachings because we feel like it's a very important thing. Um, Raul, what kind of exhortation would you give a, a family? Let's, let's talk about like you know the, a mother and father they're walking with the Lord. They have children. They're going into 2020. I want my my family to be a, a my home to be a spiritual home. What do they need to do? Uh, as parents, they need to first of all to look at their uh, media, Mm -hmm. see what they're listening to, what they're watching, uh, what kind of uh, phone uh, extension they have given to them. You know, you have a phone, and what do you use it for? Kids, I see these kids going to school. They're standing in the corner texting. They don't even, and they're coming out of school walking. They don't even talk to each other. They're on that phone, like they're glued to it, and that phone is destroying their minds. You know, and, and parents, a lot of parents don't know that because a lot of parents don't know technology. Yeah. That's the problem. Especially my age, a lot of these parents, they don't even know how to, you know, set up a phone. Mm-hmm. And I think that parents need to, first of all, get on their knees, ask God what they want in their home spiritually, and then what God wants to do in their lives mm-hmm. so they, they can help their children and they can have a ministry in their own homes. You know, Wade, your, your children are young, like like mine. My kids don't have phones or any of those things yet. Um but you do um, teach uh, college age, which is roughly 18 to mid-20s, late-20s. Um, obviously, we're watching this generation that are using this to the max capacity. And once again, there are a lot of good yes. capabilities for technology. All of us use them, but also there's some pitfalls. What are the things that you see that is facing or plaguing this generation with that? Yeah, I think... Um being wise and educating yourself and not being ignorant to uh, what's taking place in our culture, whether you're a parent or you're a child. You know, a lot of times a cell phone um, is like a Trojan horse into the home Mm -hmm. and really into the minds of the the family. And, um, you know, it's like it's been said, Pastor Dale, I think, has given the analogy of it's like giving a kid a loaded gun. Mm -hmm. Guns are, they can protect and they can enforce uh, but they could also destroy life if you if you're not wise enough and mature enough to u- know how to use it. So, uh, for kids, I think it's the same way. And um, there's there's been so many multiple studies on what um, screen addiction has done to the to the physical brain and how it's um, affected the way kids think now mm-hmm. and the way kids reason and. Uh, we know this for sure that kids are not in the word of God. Mm-hmm. And so they have no filter on how to filter through truth and how to filter through the lies of this world. And I, I do think there is a heavy responsibility upon the parents to educate their child. Um, so maybe the parents can't be ignorant. 
you know, the parents need to know what's going on in their child's life, and they need to know their child. They need to know, as the Bible says, to know the state of your flock, yeah. if your child's prepared for this or not. Um, but to really be um, connected. We, as parents, especially now, we can't f- afford not to be engaged. Um, there's a fight for your home. There's a fight for your family, for your children's life. And um, there are many pitfalls. The pitfalls are endless. But it really comes down to your giving... We we talked about this before. I could not imagine from my own bedroom being in high school, having access to the rest of this world. Right. Yeah. I would be a complete, knowing the path that my life was on before Christ, I would have been a mess. So we're, we're destroying, we're allowing our kids to destroy themselves before they even know it. And destroy your home, bring love yeah, to for sure. Home. For sure. Yeah. You know, there's a good study. I'm going through the book of Genesis right now and teaching on Friday nights. It's been amazing. I love going through the life of Abraham. And in particular, when you see that Abraham, or a, he was named Abram at the beginning, but and him and Lot, his nephew, as they were beginning to have so many possessions, it came to a place where they didn't want their servants to fight or whatever. So they decided to, to split up a little split bit. Out. And they gave him the the ability to choose first. And Lot chose the plain of Jordan. He, yep. he saw everything that was, was beautiful. Now, if you follow the life of, of Lot, we know that w- that would end up being a catastrophe. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember, I don't know if it was John Corson, it was somebody that I had listened to breaking down that text. And it was pretty cool because one thing they said is like, Lot chose by sight, he chose by emotion, feeling, I didn't take in consideration, like, is this where the Lord's leading me right. to go? Because, and a lot of times, people don't realize that the decision that they make, they might say, hey, this is a good business business uh, decision. Yeah. This would be good for this. All this makes sense, but they don't filter it through the Word of God or by God's Spirit. And sometimes they make a decision based upon themselves, by emotion, and it can destroy their family. You know, and you follow Lot's life. What happens? Their children aren't spiritual. You know, they've taken people, uh, men from from there, and uh, you know, there there's no faith. And see, Lot was carnal. Mm-hmm. You know, he had no connection with God. Abraham did. That's why Abraham stood back and said, "Okay, you choose where you want to go." He wasn't. You know, if you were really um, a person that's uh, seeking after yourself, mm-hmm. you you want I want everybody to know me. He would have made the first choice, but he knew that God was guiding him. So he stood back and said, okay, Lord, we're having problems. You're my nephew. Which place do you want, the right or the left? And he saw Sodom and Gomorrah, which is beautiful. Mm-hmm. He said, I, I think I'll take that. Not recognizing and being sensitive that that's a place where sin was the most. And, you know, and bringing that up, that's why the yeah. Bible is so timeless. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah, it might not be like you have a bunch of sheep and yeah. cattle. You got to be, oh, we got too much. But, you know, in life, maybe you're in a workplace. Maybe you're in a ministry. Maybe you're in something else where you feel like maybe God's leading to something else. Well, you better filter it through the word of God. Maybe you feel led to go move back to Texas or to move to New York yeah. or move out of the country. Um, but you really need to filter in God's word and, and God's God has spirit. spoken already to uh, Abraham. Yeah. See, so Abraham had already a connection with God. Mm-hmm. So he decided probably, you know, we have the Holy Spirit, you know, decide, well, you know what, if I choose that side, and probably God spoke to him. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't hear it, but I think God spoke to him. Why don't you let Lot choose first? I prepare this place for and out of out of that whole thing, remember the Arabs mm-hmm. and the Jews. Yep. God had a purpose for the Jewish nation already. Yep. And then got a purpose for the Arab nation. And so God knew what he was doing. God's choice is best. God's choice is the best. And that's what happens with Abraham. Yes. God gives him more than his You made a choice as far too. As he could see. All of us here, yeah. we made a choice, you know, yeah. when you came to Christ. And that's the thing with your walk with the Lord, you know. And that's what that's what we say, walk with the Lord, because it is a, a journey. And there are, by God's Spirit, He gives us the ability to make choices. Yes. And there are good choices that we can make when we align to God's Word, and they benefit our lives. There's decisions that you can make that could be dumb, carnal. You suffer the consequences Wait, when it comes to these, I, I bring up this because there's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of fast-moving mm-hmm. things through social media, through lifestyles. People may be feeling they need to make a change in different areas, but yet they need to hear God's voice. The importance of being still and knowing that, that God is who He is. Why don't you share with the people a little bit about that when it comes to decision, how important it is with the Word? Yeah, I think one of the a great temptation of, of the enemy is making you feel as if you have to make a decision in this immediate moment before God speaks. You know, the, the world is at fast pace. Life is moves fast, but we really have to trust in the sovereignty and the providence of God and, and not react by emotion. 
in our lives right now. Um, I, I'm thinking of Ephesians 5 where Paul tells the church to, to walk circumspectly, not as fools but as wise, redeeming the, day, the time. The days are evil that we're living in, you know? And so we have to be diligent, and I've used this uh, term before, but like militant in our devotional life mm. because um, very disciplined in our devotional life because everything... Um, in our life, the decisions that we make, they end up affecting wives and family and children and those who are around us. Um, you're responsible mm. and you're accountable to other people. And God wants to use your life. And so we as men, as mothers, as fathers, as leaders need to really... That's why the, the message to the church in Revelation is he who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is yeah. saying. I always think of Samuel. The first lesson that the Lord taught Samuel was how to hear the voice of God. Yep. And so you're not going to do that apart from time alone with his word. And you have to make a conscious effort to slow down and to get in the word and make the word of God a priority of your life. Because you can't be led by emotions. You just talked about Lot. That was all emotion. Right? The Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight, and our faith is built up as we spend time in the Word. Christianity in life, it's complicated, but it's very simple. The Lord makes it very simple. Abide in me, trust in me, I'll direct your path, I'll give you the wisdom. That's what Paul did. And you stay connected <laughs> to the Lord. I, yeah. I think in Nehemiah, you, yeah. you talk about Nehemiah, we started this program with talking about having vision. Yeah. Nehemiah's life started in prayer. In mm -hmm. chapter 2, he knew what to say when the opportunity was presented him. Mm -hmm. In chapter 3 and 4, the enemy comes against him, so he knew how to answer. In chapter 5, um, there's battles from within. He knew how to answer. In chapter 6, he knew he needed discernment. Mm -hmm. So he's connected to God. And Nehemiah did some great things for the Lord, but it was the power was his devotion to the mm -hmm. Lord. Yeah, connected. And being connected and yeah. knowing that the Lord will give him the wisdom and what when he needs the wisdom to do what God's called him to do. You know, um, another guy that I love in the Bible is Daniel. And Daniel was a man of his times. He was a man that, that prayed. He didn't, well, it wasn't of the world. He had the purpose in his heart that he would not defile himself. But he prayed, and he was in tune with three God's spirit, day. right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, three times a day, as his custom was, it says, that he would always continually pray. Raul, you got saved in 1972. Yeah. Um, and the things that were going on in the world. God gave you a burden for your community, your high schools, you know, and then that season through the 80s, the teaching ministry that you, that God just blessed and all the way up to the present time. What is it about your life and ministry that's so important for you to be in tune in? What's going on in the world? You, you got to know what's going on in the world because the world has changed. How, how do you stay up to beat what's going on? Well, you know, I... I I really believe in prayer. You know, I pray. I don't like to watch news. I mean, I'm just honest because yeah. it really just makes me mad. Mm -hmm. But it really, I just go through the Word and I see the things around me. And I don't have to go too far to see where the world's heading, especially when by my house when I leave, I see all these kids and I see these parents and how people are into themselves, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, I go by those houses, they got gyms in their houses mm -hmm. now, you know? And you figure these people are physically fit, mm -hmm. but not spiritually fit. Yeah. They're dying. Yeah. And the church needs to understand this year is a year to stay fit spiritually more than ever before because Jesus is coming. And if he's coming, people need to believe. It. If they don't believe it, they're not gonna, we're not going to do it. What, what do you see as some of the big challenges the church are facing today? Oh, man. It, <laughs> electronics. <laughs> I think that's a big thing. Yeah. yeah, distractions that, you know, you have the TV, the movies, and then, of course, the distractions, the dangers that we have in, on the, the distractions we have in the Internet, you know, where you know that if I have children, there's people out there, they want my children. You know, they want my grandchildren. So I have to stay in tune with God spiritually, mm -hmm. to have discernment. Because mm -hmm. I have found that when my grandchildren are going one way, the Holy Spirit has spoken to me so that I can pray with them and I can share with them. I'm not their parents, but I share, every time they get in my car, I share with them, I pray with them because I love them so much. And I love my neighborhood too. And I see these kids, you know, they're heading the wrong way. Their parents are giving them the wrong wisdom. And what's going to happen when they're 18, 20, 21? They're going to come back and they're going to say, oh, my son, you know, he's in jail now. My son is stuck, you know, got up in drugs. Or my son has so much money, he doesn't speak to any longer. Well, why didn't you watch over your son? Mm -hmm. Why didn't you train him? And this is why I tell him, that's why I'm a Christian, because I really believe that my life is right here in the Word of God. 
Yeah. And this is where God brought me when I got saved in 1972. And I never want to look back. I want to look at the present and I'm looking to the future. Mm. You know, when it comes to um, our nation, our nation's going through so many things. We've seen a lot of blessings for sure. You know, in the world today, yes. there are wars and there are rumors of wars. There's things that are taking place. Um, when we look at some of those things, you've always been so big on, on prophecy over the years of teaching. What do you see lining up in our, in our world today? Right now, I think you see 38, 39 is lining up. The reason I say that is because we're in the Middle East. Mm. You, know, you have Iran. You have uh, Iraq now, and you have Turkey, you have Russia. You have all these nations that Ezekiel 38 talks about in the future. They're going to line up and come against Israel. Why do you think Israel has prepared themselves you know, with the weapons? They will not back down out of anything. They don't understand that God's behind them. You know, they think they're a strong nation. They have all these weapons. But the Bible says that when Russia comes down and Israel is getting ready to be invaded, God steps in. Mm -hmm. And God wipes up those people, not Israel. God protects his people. They are his people. I think they were at that point, not tomorrow the next day, but it could happen at any time. Yeah, no. And this is a, a big a year, big year. Big you know? year. Um, for the United States, you know, they are going to be electing the, the new president again yes. at the end of the year. Yes. Oh, that's why you got to continue to pray that the right person you know, is in place to, yeah. to lead this nation. And the um, right person is, you know, President, President Trump. President yeah. Trump. Yeah, you know, you know I, I think that he has made a lot of great stands, especially yeah. for the Christian church. There's nobody's perfect. No, no. nobody's perfect. None of us. But I, I believe that he is the right person to lead this nation. They need this to see the nation, history, man. I mean, sure. look what he's done. Yeah. He's brought us back. He loves our country. He loves our flag. He loves our troops. Yeah. He loves the people. Why would you want to vote for somebody else yeah. when he is the one that's brought this nation where we are today? No. Totally agree. Totally agree. Uh, Wade, when you see a lot of these things trending, you know, because yeah. we're dealing with like a younger generation yeah. too. They're they're growing up in a different world, different nation. Yeah. Um, when you see the the things as far as you know the word mm -hmm. prophecy mm -hmm. and all these things as well, how does Lord, Lord stir your heart? Yeah, I think my, I get concerned for, I was thinking about this this morning when I, I drove in to get breakfast and I was looking at the guy who was um, at the drive-thru and I'm like, this kid, this kid probably has no clue what's going on in mm -hmm. Iran right now. And we have a generation, like we've been talking about, yeah. that lives on social media, and they form opinions based off 30-second sound bites yeah. that they hear on Instagram. Mm -hmm. They're so, and I don't say this condemningly, they're just, we're just uninformed. Yeah. And uh, if you're a believer here today, and, and like you said, this is a huge year. Look at how we just started this year with what took place in Iran mm -hmm. and yes. what's taking place right now. It's an election year, everything yep. that's taking place. You look at Ezekiel 38 and 39, <laughs> I, I'm just saying you better be ready for what the Lord's about to do. And if, you, if there's any sin in your life or uh, things that the Lord has been speaking to you about, right now is a time to get your life um, in check. But as it comes to the president in this election, it's really simple to me. Um, we have one president that's running that is pro-life, mm -hmm. pro-Israel, mm -hmm. and... And pro-America. And pro-America. <laughs> so um, I, I, don't, I don't really know what the channel or what the, the, the challenge is. Um, for, I mean, yeah. I don't want to sound biased. I don't want to get into politics. But I say that because... As Christians, we're called. We're not called to be ignorant. You know, the Bible talks about the sons of Issachar who knew their times, but they knew what to do. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, and kind of back to to Rawls' point is getting back into the Word and trusting the Lord to give you wisdom and discernment. And and I, and for us here, I know that there's a sense of urgency. Why do we have a sense of urgency to teach the Word? Because there's so much deception in the world. Yes. Why do we have an urgency to reach the lost? Because the Lord is coming quickly. You know, we have an urgency because we see the times that we're living in and we're praying that the Lord does a work in our church, in the church abroad, because the time is short and there's so much deception and the Lord is coming, I believe. And Sean, the rapture, man. Yeah, yeah. the That's rapture of the church. The, Everything is lining up. Before Ezekiel. For sure. <laughs> Wait, we're right there. And, you know, I think that's one of the things that I would say here, too, is like, we know God has called us to teach God's Word. Those are the giftings that God has given to us. We are here to be a part of the ministry that Raul has been called to, to lift up his arms and to, to fill in the gaps. We teach on different um, um, studies throughout the week as well and be able to minister to the people. And our role, yeah, as we talk about all the things in the world, we have to know our call. 
And our call is to teach God's word, to teach this generation, to teach the older generation as well, that they can continue growing and making an impact in their homes and in their communities. Because there's a lot of false teachings that's out there. There's a lot of a lot. wacky stuff that's out there. And it is our responsibility. And that's why there's spiritual warfare. There's warfare that would want to take Rawl out or you out or me out. We have to stay in God's word because the greatest asset that we can be to others is to use our gifts. So it's amazing to watch lives change and transform by, by the word of God. And that's what you want so people can make rational decisions. Yes. They can make godly decisions. Raul, what are some exhortations you would give the listening audience? There is those that listen to you on the radio. There are those that are watching on YouTube right now. What would you say to this generation? I would say, number one, that we love you. That's why we're on the air. And that you guys need to be in, in prayer. You need to be in the Word of God. Uh, you need not to be looking at people. You need to look at Jesus, you know, so that you can develop, you can grow. I'll tell you a little story. When I went to a bookstore one day, I was going to accept my books. And I was going to the books, and I saw this Bible. And so I picked up the Bibles with Dale, and we opened the Bible, and it was our pastor that was on the radio at one time. He fell with a bunch of women, and here is his Bible, and all his books were sold by him to this bookstore. I mean, what does that tell you? What kind of a witness is that to young people, mm -hmm. to older people? That here is a God that's talking about love, grace, mercy, and peace when he did not practice what he preached. No. That's important. Yes. And that's what the Bible says. We are to be men of integrity. We are. It's on how you start the race. It's how you finish. It's how you finish. Yep. And the other day, you taught off a scripture that I've always loved, the end of Matthew chapter 7, where it gives all these exhortations, uh, knowing uh, false teachers by yes. their fruits, what comes out of their lives. Also, not everybody that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall inherit the kingdom of God, but it ends the Sermon on the Mount by giving the two foundations. Mm -hmm. uh, he who hears these sayings of mine and does them, I'll liken them to a wise man that built upon the rock, and the foolish one is the one that builds upon the sand. sand. You know, the storms are going to come either way, but the way you make it through, totally different. It all comes down to the foundation. Why is the foundation so important in the days we're living in today? We've talked about a lot of things. We've talked about distractions. We've talked about what's going on uh, nationally and internationally, globally. Uh, but I think a great threat to the church is all the aberrant teaching and just wacky theology that's taking place. Um, and it's always been there, right? Yeah. It's all, it always it comes back in a different, under it's a different guys, name, yeah. but it's all the same. Um, but I think a, a, one of the greatest challenges up against the church today is that we have more access to it than ever before, because we're, we are well aware as pastors here that we can be teaching r right doctrine, but when people in the congregation go home, they can be on YouTube looking at three or four or five other teachers that are teaching just wacky stuff. And so the Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5 to test all things. We need discernment. Yeah. We need to know what is truth and what is error. You know, the Bible talks about, Paul warns Timothy that yep. in the last times, people will heap up for themselves teachers having itching ears. They'll be turned aside from truth and be turned to fables. Mm. And so deception is rampant in the last days, and it's in the church. Mm. So not everything that looks real is real. Not everything that looks like truth is truth. And again, it seems like the show keeps going back to the simplicity of knowing the word and having a relationship with God. You know what? You might be reading the Bible. You might be going to church, living the mm. wrong life. Yeah. And, and that's really something that's going on in the church. You guys know, you guys teach. We see people in the pew. I mean, they come, but you're wondering how many people really are walking with God? Mm. How many people are reading and praying? We see yeah. people coming with their Bibles, you know, and you think, mm. wow, I mean, what's going to happen to them? It's like they're here to feel good and then leave here and continue to do what they do and wait for another Sunday to come in and feel good, mm. but not leave totally different. Yeah. You know, when it comes to God's Word, you know, one thing that's so important is you make it a priority in your life because you need to be encouraged, you need to be convicted. It will be the way that you're able to be encouraged in the decisions that you are to make in your life. 2020 is here. We're going to continue doing these shows. We're going to be talking about many different topics, so we're thankful for all of those that, that tune in. We'll be back next month for another episode of Straight Talk. You guys take care. Love you. Peace.